right, you want to do the intro? I can do your theme music. I can, sure. I can run you up in. Do theme music? <laughs> Keep no, going. No, I'm not doing theme music. Oh, Go for it. <laughs> Good, the Blackheart tournament final, and in the final we are going to meet a no one other than Blackheart. I'm not going to bother it's with the, the color. It's the loser bracket final. It's the loser bracket final. It's the loser bracket final. Okay, who just said that? Uh, that's creepy. Uh, it's the loser bracket final, and uh, well, <laughs> in rainbow color we have Blackheart versus in rainbow color we have Whiteheart. These guys are using a mod to confuse us and to make everything look pretty. Oh um, no, RGB has invaded video games. Yeah. Crap. <laughs> and we are also going to see uh, some new starting positions, I suppose, because uh, these guys are hipsters and they want to change up the gameplay and be funny. So yeah, um, it's going to be good. This is the final of the losers bracket, so there's going to be one more game to come. All right, looks like uh, I am not even going to be able to use colors. All right, so Whiteheart is on the left, Blackheart is on the right. For Whiteheart now. and Blackheart are both walking forward to build land factories in the crook of the hill on the opposite side of the map from their starting locations. And I don't really understand why they agreed to do these starting positions, but apparently some words were exchanged. So that is what we're dealing with now. At least they'll get a lot of reclaim that they can instantly overflow into um, their already full storage. So that's a thing. Also, chat is... Do I really want to scroll down on this? Uh, yeah. Oh, it, it's a dick butt. Because, of course, it's a dick butt. It is? I can't read. <laughs> uh, oh. When they type in <laughs> chat, their color appears to be the current color on their ACU when they type the message. <laughs> so yeah, that certainly helps. <laughs> That's interesting. All right, like... so we'll wait for them to get their build started. Look, they are it. crapping on balance. It makes sense. I mean, hey, this is Blackheart, Turney. This is this is politics, guys. Right, balancers. We must get rid of them. Revolution. All balance is so much better than what we have now. I mean, they're right. Okay. So Land Factory for Blackheart, a little bit away from the reclaim this time around. And we have got uh, Whiteheart on the bottom left, also building a Land Factory, slightly ahead of Blackheart, maybe one tick. So the early advantage, of course, goes to Whiteheart, right? Right, because right. three score points definitely makes a difference. I think this is <laughs> this is actually way too easy because like they didn't even rename their ACUs to Blackheart and Whiteheart. We can still tell who they are. Don't say that. They might realize that the mistake that they've made or someone might message them or something. And I then, hope they, they heard us. I hope they didn't hear us, yeah. Isn't it fun? <laughs> Isn't it fun to cast a game and somebody wins and you don't even know who it was? Brink Lover 2007 is apparently <laughs> um Blackheart now. Alright. <laughs> Whiteheart is Blackheart, yeah. <laughs> cool. Crap. <laughs> I so like are this. They both the stream is that what we could deduce from this i guess so they're both spying on each other so i guess they have the same advantage either way yeah. all right you know <laughs> what they're playing they're 2100 and 3 2300 rated players they're friends in faf i'm just gonna leave this up to them as far as the ethics of it goes we're just gonna cast this stupid game <laughs> what do you mean stupid this is probably the best game we are going to see this tournament i mean it's uh... in rainbow color it is, it is RGB after all. It is RGB. Okay, so Blackheart is going four power generators. These guys are going to break me, okay? I'm just going to flop over twitching on the floor by the time this entire thing is over. We've got a couple of mass extractors going down. Very odd build order, of course, because you have restricted build space because you're building on the side of a freaking hill because you couldn't just build in your home area where you have nice flat terrain and plenty of reclaim to grab. Looks like Hydro build over to the left, and then a second land factory for Blackheart, who is Whiteheart, who is yellow. And then on the right-hand side, we've got Brinklover, who is Blackheart. Yes. 
He is also going first land, got a few mass extractors out on the edge, moving out to build the hydro, and he is going second air. So we do have a little bit of a difference in the build orders. Do you actually want to talk about build orders, or is that completely irrelevant at this point since they have moved to different starting positions than you would normally have? Well, I guess the build uh, the builds are improvised, but last time I took a look at Blackheart, it, it looked professional. Like, yeah, eco-management seems good. Uh, I guess Whiteheart's used more of his resources than, uh, than Blackheart because uh, he's got more reclaim and also less uh, stuff in the in the bank, right? But uh, I guess- uh, All right, so to clarify, Nexus of Reality says that bottom left is Petrick, top right is Blackheart. Okay, that was what I assumed. <sighs> yeah, there needs to be a rule against this in tournaments because this makes it very difficult to do anything at any higher level of integrity or whatnot i i don't know i don't know i don't think i care anymore at this point we've got a couple of tanks out engaging on the left side of the map a little bit of a raiding party marine dragging a scout along being pursued by a tank which of course will never catch up to the dang thing and then we've got engineers moving out to grab the expansions for blackheart on the top right not a whole lot of defensive options though so if any combat units do make it up into this little plateau, then all of that stuff is going to be doomed. Quite a few land factories planned for Petrick. Total of uh, seven. Reminds me of have... a certain game against Farm Slash in which Pillars overpowered T1 spam. We've also got an equivalent number of land factories placed for Blackheart in the top right. So overall, very similar build orders for these two guys. Kind of wondering if they are doing the exact same thing on purpose. I don't know. I do not know. So just kind of looking at how the map is playing out we do see a slightly better air force for blackheart in the top right uh we've got one extra interceptor two extra interceptors up there of course the later air factory from petrick is going to make a difference in that regard just about got a slippery slimy mech marine in the back actually he did it outran the tanks so that is going to be able to pick up an engineer kill most likely and do a little something with its miserable life single striker versus two on the north side with an engineer furiously microing can an engineer actually turn fast enough to dodge a tank shot uh yeah if it's far away enough i've seen it before i think holy smokes engineer survives at six hp by reclaiming the tank as the other tank is firing at it so the expansion here lives Looks like uh, ACU moving back into the spawn location, so the home territory will be regained. This looks like something that we should have seen at the beginning of the match. <laughs> uh. Looks like Blackheart is going to two. The pillars are... Yeah, Whiteheart isn't yet. I think the RGB mod goes out of sync for units built at different times. Yeah, it does. Like, the icons are all correct, but uh, if you zoom in the on the colors, units, yeah. It's only some one of the color factories are yellow, some are green, some are red. Yeah. It's a very cool mod, though. Confusing as all hell in a team game, I imagine. <laughs> In a one versus one, it wouldn't make that much of a difference because you're only going to see one color, but in a team game where you're dealing with like three or four people at a time, it would be murderous. Uh, I think in a way this uh, mod actually has uh, the potential to teach you something. Uh, I mean, it was surely not meant for this, but uh, but uh, if you want to use the, mo the mod to learn something, then it's to play very zoomed out and keep track of everything. All right. I am just about fed up with this. It's very difficult to even comment with what's going on when 
everything is shifting colors and you can't even keep track of the names. Uh, it's not so bad, Brink. Come on. I mean, on it's a very you. basic level, we have pillars from Blackheart soon and no pillars from Whiteheart, but Whiteheart has a map control lead. And uh, if Blackheart is going to be able to uh, defend, then the pillars are probably going to win the game because uh, this could be just another open palms farm such versus Petrich sort of game. That is true, but we do have some T1 units from uh, Petrick moving in to kill off the base. Got the radar, getting the mass extractors. The T1 raids are being pretty dang effective, and then you throw the ACU on the top left into the mix that is probably going to be able to knock out the T1 point defense and secure that expansion. You're looking at about 65 to 70% map control in favor of Petrick. That's going to be hard to come back from, even if the pillars do come online quickly. And right now, that factory isn't even producing. So, it's possibly forgetting about a queue, possibly waiting. It looks like T2 Engineer is going to be the first thing out. Right. The T2 upgrade from uh, Patridge was just started. It looks like it was a response to uh, seeing the enemy icon grayed out. I want to see how it looks like with the mod. Oh. Right. Does it is it just a faded version of the last color, or does it synchronize with everything else? It synchron. It <clears throat> seems to synchronize. Yeah, it synchronizes. <laughs> it's pretty cool. All right. So some T1 land units now pushing through to Petrick's bases. He doesn't actually have any combat units on this side because he's feeding all of the T1 units around to the north. So he's probably going to lose at least the two mass extractors here, radar, maybe a couple of the mass extractors over further left. And then, of course, with the artillery on the plateau, he could lose this mass extractor as well, just north of the plateau on the downhill side. Uh, it looks like we've got a T1 transport picking up a handful of strikers. So those are going to be dropped somewhere special, I am sure. And then we've got pillars building out of a single solitary factory no other t2 support factories planned as of yet and actually no special assistance on the t2 hq so this is a little bit weird to see obviously blackheart is at a mass disadvantage currently so he probably can't afford to put too much build power on any one thing but uh if you're going to make the t2 shift why not build a larger scale of units with that t2 hq yeah. You got like, T2 from Petrick as well now. There is a net advantage of three pillars on the map, and Petrich has now started making pillars. So I'd say that uh, the earlier T2 for Blackheart didn't work out. I don't think this was because uh, the uh, decision to give up map control was bad. It was rather because he didn't prioritize it enough, and he didn't uh, like uh, build units immediately as soon as the factory finished. Blackheart, not Blackheart, Petrick is getting quite brave with his ACU. He's actually fully on the north side of the map on the plateau. So he is locked into this position. He does have the map control to do this, I think, but this is kind of a risky slot because if it were me, I would be nervous that I might slip in map control and have units hit me from the front and back and you can't get down off the plateau. And then once you're on the plateau, there's not a lot of room to dodge. So probably not the safest spot to be, but also when you've got this much map control, it might not be as dangerous as I think it is. Looks like Petrick is going to be able to secure both his own plateau on the top and also half the plateau on the north. And since he is building combat units, he should be able to lock down all of the mass extractors up here. It's such a nice view, shifting colors. <laughs> Petrich has yeah, scaled up his T2 production, a support factory. Yep, we've got two T2 on the south side versus the same old one on the north side. I wonder if he had plans to tech up to something else. 
because he is going to a T2 Mass Extractor right now and building a T2P Gen, but I just don't see him having the mass to pull out T3 or some other kind of shenanigan. It's very weird that he hasn't scaled up his T2. He's uh, scaling it up now. He's uh, getting two more support factories, but I suppose it's just kind of too late. I think he, he just forgot about it. It doesn't look like Blackheart is in tryout mode. Uh, at least not against Petrich, but uh, that might just look this way because Petrich is such a good player. That could be the case. T1 bombers are going to kill off a Hydro, maybe a couple of mass extractors and whatnot in the center. So Blackheart is exercising his air superiority that he won pretty dang early on. Uh, it's going to take a bit for Petrick to get back in the air game because he is currently sitting on a grand total of four interceptors, which is not very many in the face of about 10 for Blackheart. But with the scaled up T2 production, he might be able to do some nasty things to Blackheart's base. Of course, he's got the two factories just the same. Actually, he's got a third, but nope, never mind. That is a T1. But he has a pile of assistance on this. Loads of engineers. probably about half again the build power that black blackheart has on his t2 forces the pillar count right now is almost the same so 13 versus 15 favoring petrick uh favoring petrick yes yeah and that lead's gonna grow because of the build power right so he went from three control. behind to two ahead then you got an overcharge there and that's going to put him further ahead still. Overcharged every single one of the pillars on the northern plateau. I think that's probably going to be hard to come back from. Uh, Blackheart is just in bad shape overall. Map control, eco, and unit count. Well, either player could still invest into his snipe. And depending on whether it works, it uh, may shift uh, the current balance. All right, so let me go Q in here and see exactly what we got going on. Whiteheart is at, uh, Petrick's at 43 mass per tick with 10,000 reclaimed. Blackheart also 10,000 reclaimed with 33 mass per tick. So it looks like Petrick is about 10 mass ahead, which is not as much as I thought it would be 12 mass ahead now. Um, and both of them are even on reclaim. So it still could potentially be anybody's game, but as time goes on and you see more and more of Blackheart's map control threatened and his resources going down, it just gets harder and harder to come back from. Patrick is uh, two T2 mixes ahead. So yeah, at the moment it does look like uh, Patrick is winning. All right. Blackheart upcycling his uh, T1 factory into more T2. Yeah, he did reclaim one factory to get the mass back. I uh, guess he reckoned he didn't need his build power. If I were him, I would probably be building... <laughs> Excuse me. I would probably be building a little bit better defense up here. This game is killing me, man. This game is killing me. <laughs> um, I see now, though, that Petrick has walled off the left side, so he's apparently just content to keep the mass extractors that he has and just kind of abandon everything else on top of the plateau, that one single solitary mass extractor. On the south side, looks like we've got about six pillars moving up versus virtually no forces on the northern plateau, or the southern plateau, rather for Petrick. Petrick is building out of three T2 factories now, still with pretty dang heavy assistance. So I think his production is roughly on par now with what Blackheart is fielding. Blackheart's added some more engineers onto his assistance and that extra factory. So I think they're running just about neck and neck. This is also gonna be killing the South Plateau at the same time as Petrick is finishing killing off the Northern Plateau. So, it's exchanging blows, blow for blow pretty much, 
But Petrick, I think, is still a little bit ahead because he has claimed things faster and is going to be able to maintain his mass advantage because of that. There is a bit of a stalemate right now, and Blackheart is using it to get T3 land. Ooh, Percival's. What are we looking at on pillar HP? So it's, oh, 1,500 HP. So uh, Percival's are not a one-hit kill on pillars. However, if you've got pillars in the fight, then it's like two bullets from a pillar and one bullet from a Percival to kill the um, to kill the enemy pillars. So it can work out pretty heavily in your favor, of course, as Percivals normally do. Looking at this side of the map, we've also got a drop coming in from Petrick that's going to hit up the northern plateau with a couple of tanks and some pillars in play on the north side, killing off one of those precious T2 Mexes that Blackheart has. Uh, I like the, the drop. Uh, I like the drop up top. It's uh, it's it's kind of nice spotting this opportunity and going for it. Yeah. Petrick is now over double the eco of Black of uh, Blackheart. 61 to 27. 25 lost another max. Pillars don't seem to be missing a lot. The projectiles travel quite fast. Like, I was wondering, uh, Whiteheart's army was standing still and Blackheart's army was moving. I, I, I wondered whether many of the projectiles from Whiteheart would miss, but it didn't seem so. So unless uh, there's Ardy or dark fire units with uh, slower projectile speed, there may not be too much reason to dodge all the time. It kind of depends, right? Yeah. Pillars have a pretty high movement speed. I don't know. They are fast, yeah. Oh, the tanks on top of the hill can hit, but the tanks below the hill cannot. That's going to be a wash right there. Huh. <laughs> uh, but three versus two, some extra damage coming in. Might still be okay. It is okay. Petridge is always later to tech in so many games. He seems to eco, and when his opponent techs, he starts teching too. But until then, he just ecos. Well, if he's ahead in eco, then he can tech faster. Well, right. Kind of depends on how well the opponent makes use of the tech. Yeah, 29 to 52 <laughs> on the mass now. Are we going to see and, Titan uh... drops? <laughs> <laughs> Titan drops would be great. Patrick is at 12-3 in reclaim, and Blackheart is at 16-9. 17. So Blackheart has overtaken the lead in the reclaim category. Good place to be if you're trying to make up ground. That is for sure. Titans. Never thought that I would see that. Unit count, on Earth? Unit count actually the same, but uh, bonus Titans for Blackheart pretty much. I guess this is strictly for the speed. He's running the Titans down to the south side but they're going to run into a whole group of pillars there may have been drops planned you might have been right but i think with the acu in danger from all of those extra units the pillars um the titans were brought down to try to negate some of that gotta micro fast man gotta micro fast or not you could just let all your titans die that's cool too <laughs> all your titans an entire two all the two of them. <laughs> right. Yep, T3 factory upgrade just started for Petrick. So many T1 bombers, they're even killing the flak. Oh my goodness. This game feels so very lighthearted for some reason. I mean, not, not yeah. white-hearted in the sense of light-hearted, but, but, you know, light-hearted. Uh -huh. I see what you did there. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, that was an accent. What, what I'm trying to say is, these players, being friends and all, being casual and all, but still very good at the game, they, yeah, like, it's a strange atmosphere that they created there. That two shot from the Percival though. There we go. Couple of shots from the pillars and boom, one shot. 
Yeah, the Percivals definitely need the backup versus the Pillars. Otherwise, it's eight seconds to kill each one as opposed to four. Oh, these are some I nice bombers. I think there was a pillar dropped on the north side that was able to kill off the mass extractors in the expansion up there. And then, yeah, you're right. Those bombers are beautiful, killing all those engineers. Always so frustrating when that happens and you are on the receiving end. Oh! Every single T1 engineer on that middle clump is gone. Ah, it's a hard hit to take. So how many units has uh, Blackheart gotten in the meantime? Not sure. Uh, okay, pillar count is the same. Two Percivals and a Titan. Extra for Blackheart. So what does Whiteheart have that Blackheart doesn't have? I guess better eco and... Uh, First Percival just rolled off the factory for him as well. Yeah, that's the largest scale production. Look at how much assistance he has on the T3 factory. Yeah. That's going to be quick Percivals for sure. 65 versus 25 mass income. <laughs> that loss up on the North Plateau was hard to take. I think that was a T2 mass extractor. No, those were T1s. But still a very cool job. Bit more 20 kills Pillar. To them. And there it dies, I guess. Yep. I like that one. Was able to get the 21st, I think. Yeah, it was. Alright, so now we've got a situation where we have clumped pillars and a couple of Percivals in the mix. Versus clumped pillars. And the Percivals are walking slowly up from the rear, although one of them is now in a transport, flying over to the center of the original spot. So I think, hmm, this is going to be about placement, because since the unit counts are so close and since the unit types are the same, it's going to absolutely come down to which player has his better positioned. And right now it looks like, nope. Never mind. I was about to say Blackheart was going to move through the middle and try to punch a hole through to the base, but he is going to retreat when he sees the movement from his opponent. Now it's interesting to see whether Whiteheart actually has intel, and yes, he does. T2 Raid on the center. That is uh, making sure that his ACU doesn't get swarmed by the units on the right. Because, like, imagine he intercepted the units at the bottom, and then they ended up going right, and his ACU is exposed. This could have perfectly happened to me, because I know myself, and I wouldn't have had the T2 Radar there. To, uh, <laughs> to spot the target switch. Of course, even a T1 radar there would probably cover enough to let you know what's coming. But uh, yeah, Maybe T2 not radar, how much, at better. least. Yeah, T2 radar there is really good. I just checked uh, the TML range on uh, Whiteheart's uh, previous position, and he could have TML'd the mixes in Blackheart space, but uh, maybe the hill would have stopped the TML. It looks like it. That's probably why we don't see any Team D. Yeah, that's definitely the case. I don't think that the, maybe for things in the back of the base, you would be in danger of getting TML, yeah. but the mass extractors are close enough to the hill that it doesn't matter. Blackheart has got to be hurting for mass. He's on all T1 except for one mass extractor, and he barely has any mass extractors. There's T2 air from uh, Whiteheart now, and Blackheart's ICU is uh, exposed at the bottom of the map. Might be a good time to attack. There's no air whatsoever for Blackheart either. And the closest T2 flak is in his core, I think. Or in, in the army below his core. Those shields are invaluable. They can cancel out uh, three Percival shots. I think they also cost like uh, 125 mass per, uh, power per tick. It's, it's very expensive yeah. actually, these things. Or 110, I suppose. But uh, when you can afford them, you absolutely should always get them to any uh, Pillar and uh, Percival composition. They are a good addition.
I feel like this is another one of those games where we're just waiting for someone to die. Like we had earlier. Where I really think that with the amount of eco that Petrick has, he should be able to come up with a solution to kill Blackheart straight up. But I, I just don't know. I don't know. Who beat Petrick in the first round? I don't know. That would be Whiteheart? Yeah, Whiteheart is beat him. All right. UD beat him. So if Whiteheart wins this one, it'll actually be a rematch, UD versus Whiteheart. That's right. That was the game we watched where he walked into point defense. Oh, yeah. You, you don't think... Do you think he intentionally walked into the point defense to be able to play versus Orangeheart and Blackheart again? No, I don't think so. Okay. I mean, I'm feeling a little conspiratorial today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can see why. Uh, it, 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 I, can, I can really see why, but uh, no, I don't think that uh, was intentional. Waiting on a death. Well, I guess, uh, no. Like, I was about to say they're massing gunships and, uh, and Whiteheart is going for a snipe, but uh, the support to the air factory, or wait, the HQ is not being used. Only the, the support factory is being used. Yeah. Maybe Looks ACU like snipes are out of fashion. Whiteheart is on eight Percivals, 65 mass income. So eight Percivals and 15 Pillars versus 30 Pillars. So double the amounts and eight Percivals. Holy cow. Blackheart actually has more units total than Petrick does. How does that make sense? 30,000 Reclaim versus 18,000 Reclaim. That's how that makes sense. 65 Mass per Tick on Whiteheart side versus 31 on Blackheart's. This is literally staying in the game with Reclaim. Uh, this is so pretty. He's picking up three Percivals at the same time with D1 transports. And now they are simultaneously taking Crossing off. Crossing paths with another transport. This is going to so give them good. away. He's transporting them to the other side of the hill to help in this fight. Petrick at the same time is transporting Percivals up from his own nope those are engineers never mind i was about to say he's trying to transport things to the north side to get them in place more quickly oh my goodness this is actually going to be carnage blackheart's gonna pull the win on that one still got a total of nine percivals once this transport drops though and on the right side, we've only got three Percivals, four, five. Okay, I spoke too soon. So more of the Percivals that Petrick had were in the same spot, whereas uh, Blackhearts were more spread out. So they were able to engage at different times, and Petrick came out the heavy winner on that engagement. Now all he's got to do is walk in and secure the win, because four Percivals... Uh, five Percivals and a Titan are not going to stand up versus nine Percivals. Unless there is a calm drop next to the Percivals overcharging some, but he doesn't have Tito Air, does he? No, he does not. Sad. Quite conservative use of the gunships from uh, Petrich. Could have used Why them earlier them? or built more to uh, snipe his ACU. All right, T2 gunships, killing off the point defense, probably go after the mass extractors next. If he was able to kill off the build power up there, that would probably work out pretty well for him. Also, UEF transports can transport a unit, or UEF gunships can transport a unit as well. So it would be awesome if the gunships carried a little tank or something up there with them to drop on the plateau while they provide covering fire. But I guess that would be too much to hope for. Yeah, I think so too. Fun fact, you can put a lab in the gunship and it increases the DPS on the gunship by 26, I think. How much do labs do? Sounds about 20, right. 26 DPS. In any case, uh, it's uh, pretty significant, actually. Yeah. So it 
It's like a 50% boost in the DPS on the gunship um, if you load a lab inside each one. But the lab can be shot off the bottom by anti-air. So. Black um, let's see. I'm actually going to check this since we have the time and the game is the way that it is. Blackheart's Percivals are actually winning against uh, Petrich's Percivals. Like the 5 beat the 9 sort of, right? Due to micro and overcharges? Yeah, mi micro and overcharges, right. Yeah, his ACU came up. Alright, so Mech Marine has 23 damage. And the gunship has... 60. 66. So 60, it's a 30 percent. Right. Yeah, so it's a it's a thirty percent damage increase if you load a lab onto each gunship. I think Spectres have sixty, don't they? IUF gunships stronger. I'm not sure. Oh, Flack coming in. Yeah, but I that's... think this is the end of Blackheart because he is at pretty low HP to have Percivals near his commander. Yeah, like if the Pyre Shield joins up with the Percivals, it's probably over. That's like three to four shots, depending on how fast he regens. I don't know. He might make it out. Petridge is uh, taking his time and spamming Artie. Because he can. I mean, why not, right? Why not, indeed. He's also getting the reclaim from this T3 fight now. Blackheart's getting some of it with his ACU. That is an unupgraded commander, too. A lot of luck for Petrich. Come on, just focus fire. You've got four Percivals, and the ACU has less than four shots worth of health. Just go kill him. I guess that's happening now, uh, but it missed. Yep. And two more. One more. And, oh, that was close. <laughs> Dodging the Artie. And there he goes. Man, that was painful. Rest in peace. At least the final will be a legit game because Yudi's in it. I don't think Yudi is going to put up with the shenanigans that these two guys have put up with. <laughs> no reason to burn out, Brink. It's not so That's bad. That's all I can hope for. 